realized that the, the songs that we were doing on the album didn't really reflect uh, a sense I was having about the state of feminism. Uh, and I wanted to write something uh, that was direct to the people that we would be meeting on that tour. And it's called Anguish, Misogyny. And it's basically a feeling that long ago when Dave and I started doing Mecca Normal, we intended to change the world. That was why we started a punk rock band with an unusual configuration, a man and a woman working together in this way. And we wanted to encourage women to start bands of their own with their women friends and to reveal what it was like to be in the scene at that time or in culture and society in general. And to a degree we had some success and things lined up and, and it, it happened and we, we take some degree of credit for changing the world and I like to, to I, I'm willing to risk sounding bombastic or uh, whatever, conceited, as we used to say in high school. She's so conceited. Uh, but behind that is, is a message of some sort to say that it is possible to, to actually take a project that you have no idea what's going to happen and move forward with it and you don't know what the results are but things can happen and the world can change. And having said that, this is a sense of disappointment that we didn't change it far enough or that things have swung back again in this way. It's called anguish, misogyny. <laughs>
very much. Uh, this is another, well, this is totally new, actually. I've just done it a couple of times. It's called Invisible Girl. But before I forget to tell you about, just a little bit about life on tour, I don't want to forget to, well, it's, not, it's a nothing sort of story, but this is life on tour. And we, the tour, for us, we live in Vancouver, we drove to Portland, we've been playing a show in between. We're on a major tour. Anyway, so I go to the bathroom downstairs to brush my teeth. You know, this is my instrument. I need to get the bits of almond out of it before I use it. And I brush the teeth, close the door. Uh, the toothbrush and the toothpaste stay in the little case, but my little mini dental floss falls out directly in what is obviously a patch of urine right by the toilet. And I say, oh, wow. And then my next thought is, maybe there's hot water in this place and soap. And that's a high point of thinking about this is your life, you know, these things are just, it's just constant. And there was, and so I thank you, Wonderland Ballroom, for providing hot water and soap in the downstairs bathroom. And for sound, Chuck, David, doing monitors up there, very nice folks, very welcoming, thank you. successfully. By that I mean I'm single. <laughs> single and not looking and really happy. <laughs> this is the plan, but uh, who knew? Uh, so this is called Attraction is Ephemeral, which is part of the message one of these fellows left on my answering machine. I could, I could hear him smoking. I thought I'd already broken up with him, you know. All the time. Lo and behold, you come home and there's a message. Attraction is ephemeral, Gene. I can hear him smoking. Anyway, so I looked up the dictionary out and looked up ephemeral and found out where we were. It's better this way! 
Egypt. But before that, there was this.
Not quite sure what's up with uh, throwing the pages behind me, then kind of walking on them. I don't think that's good. If there's meaning there, I don't want to be thinking about. There was a guy in Vancouver that we kind of know a little bit. He's a theater guy, director, and perhaps we'll do something with him. But uh, he was in the audience at the Vancouver show, and I've got all these pages, and I'm thinking, oh God, the guy's singing, I, I can't even memorize my own lyrics, let alone can I be in some play or something. And I talked to him later, and he's like, no, that was the most punk rock thing ever. It's like, who gives a shit about these lyrics? You don't even have time to memorize these fucking lyrics. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a bit like that. Thank you. A little bit like that. It's a little bit of a problem. So yeah, that might not work out there, you know, in their verbal ones. <laughs> This is a song that we wrote in 1986, and uh, we've done it off and on since that time. It would have been one of the songs that we did when we originally went down to Olympia and met some of the people that are playing tonight, or, or they're just a group of people that, that turned into Riot Girl and uh, the, the T Records. And uh, that was a very exciting time for us. It was called the Black Witch Tour. We were a bunch of poets and anti-authoritarians, and we collided with uh, people from Evergreen State College. And uh, that was we didn't we didn't know there was anything brewing. That's the funny thing about social movements and what looks like uh, a well-formed, well-thought-out situation. It isn't like that at all at its original point. And uh, but yet, years later, you can kind of trace back some of the the influences and history of those people, and it's uh, totally thrilling to be playing with the Julie Ruin tonight, uh, Kathleen Hammond. So that's, that's great too, to, that they made that happen, to have Mecca Normal here. This is called Strong White Male. <laughs>
which we released ourselves for some unknown reason we did that. We had a pressing fly to Vancouver actually for L LP so it was worth the trip down to the pressing plant after I think we'd only done a couple of shows. That's that's about right. You do a couple of shows, put on the LP. <laughs> what do we know? Uh, so we did this for the first 15 years at probably every show and we gave it a rest for about 10 years and then in the last five or ten years we brought it back into our set mainly because it's still relevant or relevant again it's about the right a woman has to walk down the street alone <laughs>
called Beaten Down. Also from that first album written in 1984, some crazy time.